With crop circles, and that's one of my favorite beats um, on there. It's real eerie to me. It was kind of like a spiritual dungeon, uh, <laughs> something crazy like that. But mm -hmm. um, again, I was somewhat disappointed it was so short. But um, mm -hmm. the thing is, as we've talked about already, just with the, these handful of songs, there's such diversity uh, sonically and emotionally on the production side of things. So how, as you, you know, you guys progressed, how did you balance thinking this is all going to work, even though it's so different versus, you know, some albums have a certain feel or a certain uh, oral aesthetic, whereas this one is, you know, how did you end up thinking that it was all going to fit and make sense sonically? I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure, you know, because they, these there are some very dramatic different styles between the big lush production of musicians and then the simple loop per se, like that joint you're talking about, which I, I'm really thank thanks for even noticing any of these things. But uh, you know, I we just had to trust that we've made enough records to be able to some wiggle room for mistakes <laughs> and uh and do our best and we have a pretty good engineer and um he helped make sure that sonically it all seemed like the same you know what i mean that like the same people you know the same thing in it uh and that that was big help um but like i said from the beginning i really tried to throw the kitchen sink style wise at this thing like any style that i know how to do or remotely can do i i really wanted to try to do that and it's only based on the fact of our last few records and even one of our record like there's two records we put out like in uh in 17 or some shit like that where i don't remember the difference between the fucking things so because i can't remember that made that scared the shit out of me you know what i mean like i i was like what song is that album on and I, I'm in this business. I love making records. And when I was, I was heartbroken that I couldn't remember what song, what record it was on of my own. You know what I mean? You do that to other people all the time. It's fine. But I did that to myself and I was like, oh shit, no more playing around. Nope. Let's, let's go. <laughs> Can I just say, I, 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 I want I do want to point out you should be gentle with yourself about that, man, because I know people who only got three kids and can't get their kids' names right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you got like <laughs> yeah. bro, you got like a, a thousand songs. It's okay, man. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, okay. yeah. But you know what I mean? I'm just, you know, that was it was inspirational though. Let's say that. <laughs> That's it. it worked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and on there, uh slug, you're talking about trying not to make the same mistakes on crop circles. That's one oh, of the things. Man. We do, we do not have to talk about the lyrics to crop circles. Listen, that one. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it so real. Um, those lyrics were that's basically just barely above a freestyle. I was just trying to figure out how am I supposed to rap to this beat because the beat super dope. Uh, the the hat the way the hat plays in that beat is like one of those things where I feel like I'm the only human in the world right now when i hear that beat you know what i'm saying that had makes me feel like oh shit there's this is this is the shit to me and i i, 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 had, not, I hate to cut you off i have to say this before i forget to do yeah. this though but that joint it's all about the style so slug hasn't done a whole bunch of different weird styles like he used to do all the time so when he kind of did that i was like no no this is staying so yeah. whatever he's about to say right now it don't it matter. really matter because it was and that's, all about how fresh the and and, and yeah, that's 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 what I was gonna get to is like I laid down placeholders basically to go, this is how I think I should rap to this, right? This is right, right? And he really liked it. And so I was just like, Well, all right, you know, because I don't know what the hell else to do. I don't know, you know, thank God it's short because God, if I had to make a song on here about like an actual topic, whoo, that might be hard, you know. But he liked what I did, <laughs> and uh, so we kept it. But I'll be honest, towards the end of the the end of this project, it was one of the songs that I was like, yo, what if we just made that one an instrumental and we just took me off of there? Because I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm, 
I, you know, but 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 he he reinforced and confirmed to me like, nope, it's all good. Those lyrics, they got to stay. And so now I look at it and go, OK, just like the rest of this album, how it unfolds. Is actually part of the story for me, how this album came together, a lot of the process of this album actually is more fireworks to me than the actual results like when i when i when i look at this record that the process here was so amazing to me the results are great too i'm not trying to belittle that but so now when i look at that i'm like you know what it's kind of dope that i have some vocals on there that are basically heavily affected placement holders you know what i'm saying it's like oh that's how i was kind of viewing it because i was like oh you know i know i could i could do better than that but i just never could figure out how to do it so so him being like no let's keep that is kind of tight to me because that's as close to demo as we probably have on this project you know what i'm saying it's like but it's also a big part of who we are like we used to release our demos you know what i'm saying there used to be four track demos all over the internet of all of our junk you know what i mean so it's tight to me that this that that exists in there now especially where it sits because i think that it's important for how, you know, what the what the arc of this album is and, and 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 where it goes that a song like that can sit right in there because I'm doing this like kind of looking inward stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it all it all ended up working out to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm ha- I'm happy with that. Well, well, that being said, said for both of you, how then? Because you talk about the evolution of say recording slug for yourself or how you guys interact with the beats. I would imagine this given when you guys were starting to work on it or at least the beats started going back and forth the creating this album in a different type of vacuum than touring than doing all these different things traveling so much how did i know we've addressed it somewhat tangentially maybe but did you find a different type of freedom or limitation that the creation of the album was so different in your general life and routine than, you know, what had been happening before? I think we probably have different answers to that. But for me, I would say, yes, I do feel like um, the way the album unfolded, how we created it, because we made the album in sequence for the most part there, like, like he had that beat for the very first song. He'd been sitting on that. He used to, he used to kind of warn me, I'm going to give you this beat. And he finally did. And that was kind of the jump off for us to go, let's make an album. And then after that, he didn't give me the next beat until I gave him back the first song. And then he could look at that first song and and, and, and layer it and put some stuff here and sprinkle crack on it, whatever. And I would be working on the next song. And in the, and, and while I'm doing that, he's thinking of what is the next beat I want to give him after he gives that. So we, we made the album in sequence and there was a freedom to that in a weird way, it did free me up from having to think about, um, like I, 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 I was not overthinking, does this album have all the parts that I think an album's supposed to have? You know what I'm saying? Like I, I grew up listening to these things called albums. And so I have somewhat of a template installed in my head as to what that's supposed to look like. And because of how we made this, I didn't really have to think like that. I just thought about what the next song should be about based on what the sound is he's given me and so on and so forth. So what what I think happened is like, you know, maybe also it also kind of um, started stirring up all of my peripheral vision. Because when you're focused on working on something, but you can also be thinking about this other stuff going on. I think that there's something to that to, 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 to be able to help you kind of cue yourself into what, what, what you want these final results to be. Uh, which I think for me, this is really, this is great. This is one of, this is, this project was one of the most fun ones that I've worked on in a minute. And that's weird to say, you don't want to call out one of your kids as being better than another one of your kids, you know? So that's not what I'm saying, but I, but mostly like, like the experience that I had and the growth that I think that I had during the making of this album, I think was, is, uh, is going to carry on in, you know, with the rest of the stuff that I do. And what about for you, Ant? Um, I would, I would want to just say, yeah, I agree with everything he just said, <laughs> which I do. But I kind of lost track of what the what the question was. I thought there was something about traveling or some shit. <laughs> well, I was just saying that this album, uh, based on when you guys would have been making it and going through the process, that it's a very different. Uh, the routine would have been different. Slugs not torn. You guys aren't torn. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. You're not traveling. 
because of the lockdown, because of things shutting down. Yeah. So how did that, yeah. how did that affect you? If at all, would you say of how you, from a production standpoint, were approaching things mentally or even creatively? Yeah. You know, I, I think because of, um, yeah, because we were able to create more music than normal. I was able to even explore, oh, let me see if I can just do a little more styles of sample beat, beat styles. Where am I at with that today, these days in releasing stuff like that or, or whatever you, whatever the case may be, or even diving into arranging some of this music that I had musicians play that I've been sitting on for maybe a couple of years, some of them, some of the pieces and, and whatever they were originally, they are, what I'm released now is totally different. Like I had time to be like, okay, I'm just going to let this piano come out of nowhere and then disappear. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So I had time to sit back and think about arrangement style that I, that I really, I didn't really ever really do enough of. I, I, and I'm really happy that we had this moment to do that. And I'll never go backwards now. You know what I mean? Like he said, like we will all, we will continue going forward this, this way, you know? And one thing that I really, to this point that I really enjoyed is that, um, I think we're in a space now where we get total extremes. Either the album is really short or it's really long. So I appreciated the fact that you guys seemingly <laughs> put more songs on than fewer because I like to hear them, but also it wasn't like you skimped. So mm -hmm. how and why did you guys decide to make that decision? I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into that, especially for this particular project, because this 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 album in, during the course of making it, you know, there was a lot of fun talk about how to release it just because there are so many different creative things you could do nowadays to 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 put your music into the hands of people that want to hear your music you know um and and so i mean i even think it went, went as far as at one point i was suggesting that we did make this a double a double album like who the who the hell would, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. but here's the thing as a joke because who the hell would ever make a double album like seriously in these times why would you even call it that why would you just it's it's your project it's your mixtape i don't give a fuck what you call it but to call it a double album so i was like that's that's why we should call this a double album because that's fucking hilarious and so it'd be 10 songs on one 10 songs on the other two cds for anybody that still buys those fucking things uh the vinyl will be <laughs> double vinyl because it fit perfectly onto two platters of vinyl and so while I'm while I'm like shooting my shot here trying to convince Ant and the label that this is a good idea, all of a sudden out of nowhere, Kendrick Lamar releases a fucking double album. <laughs> it was like, oh, somebody <laughs> really somebody really did it. <laughs> and, and he didn't do it as a joke. So now suddenly I find the joke was on me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh shit. So I'm kind of glad that this became what it became, which ultimately is always what it was supposed to be. Like we wanted to just you know, the, the goal is to be able to like make this cool project. And then after you make it, you go, okay, how do we release it? So with this, it worked out that this project fit on a, two pieces of vinyl, but, but the story is what the story is. You know what I mean? Like we, we were never like, oh, let's go and make a, you know, 66 minute album or however long this is. I don't know. We, we didn't have that necessarily part in mind. That could be the next challenge for the next record. Like let's do exactly like, 60 minutes on the nose like do something weird like <laughs> anyway with with this it just kind of like worked out how it worked out you make it and then you start to decide well what is this what is this thing that i've made you know what is it uh is it an album is it a string of eps i don't, I don't know you know this felt like an album it felt like an album going into it you know right away you start to feel that way but it's like i i think that you know for me Everything is an album. Everything that we do, if it's an EP, I still see it as an album because I still see it as this platter that you put on your turntable and you listen to and, or you, you you put in your headphones and you go for a walk or you, you're on the bus, whatever. It's like I still see it that way because probably because I'm old. It's how I grew up seeing it. You know what I mean? Like, I have no idea if this answers your question. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> it is. It's good. It's good. <laughs> I will. I will add. I will just add just like just like I've been saying, you know, because of the last two records, one of them was really short. We had a Halloween joint that was like pretty short. And then uh, 
the next one i can't remember how long that was but but technically this thing isn't that long compared to what we used to do it's just more songs there's more titles yeah but there's more technically titles. yeah but there's like you know we used to release 17 songs all the time 16 15 right you know yeah. so it this still be an hour long yeah yeah this one was 20 songs coming in a little over an hour i think the last one word was 14 songs coming in a little over an hour <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. those are all like all five minute songs. songs yeah yeah, yeah it's just yeah, that there's yeah. there was a lot of shorter songs on this and and and, and shorter pieces you know that the pieces to this album were just it was a different puzzle it's a different fit you know what i mean and, and i think that's all that is on a portrait the thing that's interesting from listening to you guys since the 90s up till today is how you said in there i'm more blessed than cursed because it's always curse is a strong word of course but it always seems that as we've talked about now a few times the melancholy that kind of permeates a lot of lyrically especially which is why okay stands out so much on this album and other songs we've talked about over the years but how does that realization come through on a song like portrait where you're able to acknowledge that yes i'm more blessed and cursed or yes this is a better life than maybe i talk about or i think about or i present well you know i think that it's it's um and I can't speak for the rest of the world, but for me, I think that life is better than what I actually imagine it to be. I think I go through those phases where things feel um, not not tight. You know what I'm saying? And so in those spaces, I have to remind myself like, but OK, what are you know, you got your health or. Oh, uh, you you got you got a, you know you got a job or, or you know there's all these things that you remind yourself and, and and by saying you know I've been better I've been worse is like saying you know I'm still here I'm more blessed than I'm cursed is to say you know what not only am I still here and alive but I'm actually it could it could it could be way worse and I don't I you know I think that neither of this exists in a it has to be a part I think you can be like ah oh, it could be worse. And still make space for yourself to be like, ah, this shit sucks, though. I think that there's that there's that it's important to probably recognize both if you got both. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. And then, uh, and one other thing I thought with it happened last morning. You guys were talking about doing the instrumentals. I thought that was going to be an instrumental because that's a long, that one in particular. It's a minute before Slug gets in, maybe literally a minute, but it's a long intro. I was like, oh, is this going to be an instrumental? So. There oh, right on. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was, it was a good one to do, and I just appreciate checking it out. <laughs> All right, well, there it is. Well, I uh, yeah. really appreciate your time as always. Uh, thanks so much for coming through. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of Gangster Rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The History of Gangster Rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV is just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.